All right, uh, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome to another cast. And here we have a player who's not moved yet. Carlos, are you here, bro? Your opponent's here. Carlos, are you here? Oh, he's here. Never mind. He was just walking the dog. He just ran in. Anyways, um, we have a historical matchup, sort of, kind of. We've got, well, not sort of, kind of. We've got the Byzantines for Carlos Cannon 98. Man, you know, it's crazy to me, as someone who's born in 93, that... Uh, Someone who's born in 98, I just did the math, because uh, I'm that big of a math whiz, would be 25. That's just nuts to me. Anyways, uh, what am I getting sidetracked for with the number there? We've got Carlos Cannon playing as the Byzantines in the blue. In the red, we've got Kree playing as the Turks. Uh, the map is mega random. We've got a slight ELO advantage for red. And maybe that's just due to the fact that he is at his computer when a game starts. Uh, and the map looks pretty expansive. In the middle, you've got a mushroom-shaped area of land where there's stone and there's gold spread throughout. Lots of little chunks, lots of little nuggets. And uh, then you start with a ton of golden stone at your base. Now, there is a... Uh, I don't know if you could call this a river. There's like a swamp. Yeah, this is a swampy area. If you zoom in far enough, which the game doesn't let us, we'd probably see some frogs in there. And maybe some bass below the lilies, but uh, I don't know if the water is going to be all that helpful. Now, you can use it. You can dock there, but adding fishing ships when there's no fish available is probably not advisable. Uh, I think using the water to control the map, maybe make some fires or demolition ships could be helpful later on. Um, So, we, we made the reference to Byzantines versus Turks, right? Um, Lots of things that could be said there, but let's actually talk about in the game... Um, I think it's actually quite close on closed maps. I've seen a lot of arena matchups, for example, with Byzantines versus Turks. I think Byzantines is probably preferred overall for mid to low rankings, though. Having really cheap skirmishers, having really cheap pikemen, and then just having those things be available is huge. Uh, side note, the players did not start with the scout. They started with skirmishers, and there's wolves on this map. This is the only way for Red to get vision on the map. And the wolf is just like, woo, 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 woo. It's going to attack the skirm. And this sucks because skirms have minimum range. So you have to get far away from the wolf to be able to shoot it. Oh, no, Red. That's so sad. I feel so bad for you. There's no way he wins, right? Okay, well, at least he gets to scout a little bit before he ends up dying. And there it is. Woo, woo, woo. He fell flat in his face. His friends will never hear from him again. So, um... You know, back to my point before the poor skirmisher there was brutalized by the wolf. I think cheap skirm, cheap pikes is really nice here. Uh, and just having pikemen and elite skirm available is nice. Turks don't even have that. But if you're an aggressive player and you like to play with a lot of strong units, the Turks have lots of gold options. And that could still work really well. I want to look at Red's vision. So, oh god! Oh no, he doesn't see any boars. Because he did, he just clicked his his skirmisher to the south of the map. Oh no! <laughs> he doesn't see this cow. He doesn't see these two boars. He doesn't see this boar. He doesn't see these two cows. Is this just game over? <laughs> I mean, red. Oh no! Don't tell me he's gonna make a militia now. I think he's gonna have to make something. I mean, this is a lesson to you all out there. To maybe scout your base, even if you it's just a scout. Scout your base first before clicking them off into Narnia. Like, I know the southern corner can be very appealing to some of you for some reason, but maybe just scout your base. Uh, how's Blue doing? Funnily enough, Blue has not moved much at all. Maybe these guys are just not used to using skirms as part of the scout. Blue also hasn't seen this cow. Blue has two boars over here, which he also can't really see unless he's wondering... Uh, paying attention when it wanders back into his vision. And he also is missing these cows. So they're basically down the same resources. And they're both making a barracks. What in the world? Okay, are they both going to make a militia? They are both, as people say in my community, T90 blind. But I'll have you all know. I went to the eye doctor. For the first time in... I think seven years. I know that's bad. I know I should have gone before that. But the last seven years have been grinding Age of Empires content. So I haven't let myself leave my house basically in seven years. Um, 
because they were asking me like, when's the last time you went? And the last time I'd gone was when I lived in Pennsylvania, which was five years ago. And I didn't even remember past that. Anyways, I've been on really old contact prescriptions and my eyes see the world in a completely different light. It's just absolutely insane, man. Uh, I got new prescription and it's, I, my eyesight has improved by a third if you look at the prescription. <laughs> so uh, no more T90 blind from me. And you want to hear this? My, uh, my fiance, who doesn't watch me play Age of Empires, okay? But, you know, she listens to the streams and whatnot and, and kind of knows it's important. What is Red doing here? Um, wh anyways, she goes, hey, babe, your farms might be better now. And then laughed like I would think that was funny. So uh, I knew you guys would probably appreciate that. What is this game, dude? This game is so crazy. We have three boars per player, but a single one hasn't been taken yet. We've got cows that are free and not being eaten. This dude is wandering shirtless into someone else's town. And he's now going to attack another shirtless dude. It's getting real, real sweaty over here. And now I think Red's thought better of it. And he's like, maybe I shouldn't show him I'm here. And then Blue doesn't even chase it. I... A lot has happened, but also so little has happened at the same time. And ladies and gents, I hope you're enjoying Loey the Legends. This is what we live for. All right, so that skirmisher only needs 38 more hits to kill this villager. Okay, so I imagine for Red, this was just his way of scouting. Red just wanted to be able to find things. Um, there's a lot of wood for both of them, which if they want food from that, they could just make farms, which both are working on. It, it, there's been a lot of adapting here. You can't play a normal game. On mega random especially with a generation like this okay i'm looking for wolves there's a wolf here <laughs> and we know there's a wolf near the south where the skirmisher died earlier but yeah skirmisher still chasing it's going to take that skirmisher all day to kill that now blue did make a militia and blue is not using that militia right now and i'll keep you updated with what happens on this villager but yeah anyone who calls me blind We'll see if I'm still going to be blind. I imagine I'm still going to miss things. We have not seen a single boar taken here. Wild stuff. Also, three lumber camps for Carlos. Talk about wood efficiency. Oh, boy. Oh, God. The villager's angry. He is angry. And much like the skirmisher from Red got attacked by the wolf, and there was minimum range problem, this skirmisher's <laughs> he's running home. He's being chased by the vill. Bam. So Villager does three damage a hit. Skirmisher does one damage a hit. Villager would win this if it continues like this. Oh, this is thrilling stuff. All the places you could be on the internet right now. All the videos you could be watching. Everything. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. Thank you for being here. But you are currently here watching this. Oh, my goodness. Imagine what everyone else is missing out on. Now these militia are just pissed. They're really unhappy about it. They grew up with that skirmisher. And, um, well, they're going to the site of the death of their friend. And, oh, God, now the villager's leaving. <laughs> this game is amazing. <laughs> I don't think there's any way this villager survives, though, right? I, I don't think so. The militia is slightly faster than a vill, and this is, a less, this is around 600 elo. So there's no quick walling that happens here. This villager just gets to visit a little bit more of the world before he dies. Okay. All right. Duck says, to be fair, this is one of three streams I have on at the same time. Okay, you're not dedicated enough. You're fired. Villager is also giving blue vision of certain aspects of this hill. We have Red on the way to Feudal Age. Remember, Red made a barracks a long time ago. We'll see if Red wants to make anything out of that barracks here. Didn't take a single boar. But to be fair to him, didn't really know about the boars until maybe it was too late. Look at the scouting pattern. What is that scouting pattern? It looks like a weird, creepy, bony hand doing, like, the okay sign. No. No, it doesn't. It would be a hand, a, a weird, bony, creepy hand doing the okay sign if the hand was broken in three different places. But that's a stretch. Okay, so Blue still hasn't clicked up to the next stage. Blue has 
seven militia. But Blue doesn't know where the enemy is because Blue lost the skirmisher. So both players lost the skirmisher in unfortunate circumstances. There's houses everywhere for Blue. Red's making a stable, which could be for some scouts. Could be for knights or light cav later on. We'll see. Um, couple villagers here. They're going to form a new colony in the middle. They said, hey, they're they're like the, the real thinkers of the community. Everyone here is like, hey, we've lived here for generations. Why would we ever leave? And they recognize they will eventually run out of resources there. We must prepare. And then they have very little support. Like, they were able to convince three militia to come over here, but... Okay, it's about to be a fourth and a fifth militia. Dude, Blue, you need to cool with the militia, dude. <laughs> so many militia. What is this game? <laughs> this game has been this game has been ridiculous since the start. <laughs> this is so unique. I I don't know how to describe this game, but I hope people are enjoying it. This is this is why you watch Loey the Legends. Just random crazy wacky stuff. That at higher ranks, people would get punished for, but low elo, anything can happen. I just wonder how much Red's going to freak out when he shows up to his opponent's base and sees 12 militia. Make it 15! Is he going to nope out of there, or is he going to have the confidence to continue to run in? Because I'm sure he's used scouts against 3 militia, or even 5 militia, or even 8 militia, but... 15? Dang. Okay, Blue, stop it, dude. T90 always says, continue to produce as much as possible. Stop it. Just for a second, dude. You've got 43 villagers in the Dark Age. You could just settle down. <laughs> you don't need more. Adding more doesn't do anything for you. He's adding even more. He's going up. Okay, uh, actually, I take it back. Can you please go to 20? Round it out at 20 for me before. You can't stop at 19. There's something very unsatisfying about that. Scouts should destroy. Now, remember, red knows where blue is. So I think if I'm red, I go here, right? And blue is not prepared for that. Nor is blue walled. He's just making beautiful little lines of houses. <laughs> blue is making more militia. <laughs> oh, he's, a, he's at 20. He's going up to 23 now. I don't know if I've ever seen a player that wasn't Huns like fully uh you know pop themselves up where they could go 200 pop in dark age he has 145 population space and counting how many militia to take out of tc uncontested uh it could be one but like you know if there's scouts out there with forging and bloodlines and tc fire you need way more than 23 but he's working on it what in the world and we didn't have any boars taken this game, right? <laughs> I really hope Red goes into this big group of militia. We got 14 here. We've got 12 here. All right. Now, if blue continues to household this way in this opening, then that actually offers some protection, which is quite nice. This guy's got to be trolling. This is so unique. I almost want to look at every Carlos game now. Is this his thing? Is this his strat? If if he doesn't take damage before feudal and he upgrades these things, he is going to be a force. Okay, there go the scouts. Okay. So let's see Blue's reaction time. Please tell me he notices this. Okay, scouts are running through. I don't think he's going to notice. Oh, he noticed. Okay. He's not going to quick wall, right? There's no house walling here. He doesn't have loom. Okay, well, that all those villas are dead. All right. This is why he makes so many lumber camps. Okay, so he's going to... He was going to wall here and protect the opening? What about these villas, though? You forgot about those guys. Carlos. Hey, Carlos. You have 35 militia. Use them. Okay, these guys are going to go home. They've gotten the call. Okay. Is he trying to trap this guy in here? What a crazy strat. <laughs> he 
He's like, aha, I let you into my base for a reason, fool. You have fallen for my elaborate trap with my lumber camps. The only lumber camp we cared about was this one. There's still a hole here, which I don't think Blue knows. <laughs> quick wall, quick wall. No! Sorry, I got really loud. Okay, Red is gonna be like, what is that? <laughs> what did I just walk into here? He's like, excuse me? 40 militia? Again, there is a hole here. This is, ah. Uh, it's a shame. It's a real shame. I wanted to see how this game plays out. Guy doesn't even have loom. So anyways, Blue plugs the hole and he's going back to the opening that he should have just, you know, walled in the first place. Here comes the army of militia. <laughs> the funny thing is, Red isn't that far behind, uh, or Blue isn't that far behind in Vils. Also, what else is funny is Red has now started to make militia. Red's like, good idea. Let me get supplies first. Oh, it hurts. I mean, it hurts so good, but also it hurts so bad. Oh, God. And also the militia have, like, walked all over the farm. So now the quality of the crops have gone down, too. Ugh. That's not a thing in this game. But hey, at least Blue has learned to wall. He's walled here, walled here, walled here. So that's nice. Red has killed 23 villagers. Red's about to be in Castle Age. And Red has shown the mobility of scouts. Blue uh, will upgrade demand at arms. Will now get supplies, which makes it cheaper to make militia. He wants more of them, but at a discount now because his economy is taking a hit. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, scouts are going to leave. I, I bet you Red can't believe what he's seeing right now. It's like, what? Okay. Blue, find the opponent and just YOLO it, my friend. I don't think he'll do it. I think he's he's scared. And numbers is power for him. And numbers is comfort. So he's just going to make more. 40 is not enough anyways. I think we know that. And that's not sarcasm. <clears throat> it is. But um, if he knew where the opponent was and he went over right now, he could maybe take out the TC. He's got so freaking many. Red could maybe be in trouble, but Red doesn't know this. Red's dropping a castle there. And Red could just walk it like Blue's just chilling at home, you know? Man at arms are really slow. He he, he might get upgrades. <laughs> He's making a gate here in the back. Red has done really well. Like, props to you, Kree, for being a nerd with the micro. A nerd in the best of ways, of course. And I imagine once the like have died, it might switch into something else. Like, Red's making archers right now, which is good against infantry. But once the castle's up, you could make Janissary. And Janissary just smashes men in arms. I the, the longer Blue waits, the worse this probably is for him. But I still am just really, really fascinated by this. He went crazy on the militia. Like, here's the sad thing. If he would have made five militia, stopped, went feudal, and then while he was on the way to feudal, produced more, he probably would have had like 20 or 25 that he could upgrade to man-at-arms, and he would have been uh, feudal age way faster. And then it would have been before Red even moved out. It was just a little too extreme. But he isn't finished yet. Uh, T90 said we have to just commit to whatever strategy we do. Ah, uh, he's committed. He's also committed to keeping this very exposed and open. I don't like that. Um, all right. Red's played very well. I'm sure Red is shocked at how this game has played out, but he's played very well. He's got more villagers now. He's scouting the middle with his light calf, just making sure that blue hasn't expanded to any of the stones or gold with men at arms. Uh, we have scouts now for blue. So he's just going to make everything here in feudal age. Red sees that. And again, good unit control. Very good unit control. And he should... He might be trying to bait Blue into the castle fire, honestly. He's like, hey, come here. Come here. Okay. Here, come here. You got it. You killed two of my friends. You can kill this guy, too. You can do it. Blue Blue doesn't trust it. He says, no. I have to protect this villager. 
This is ridiculous, man. This is just insane from Blue. But I think he's probably dead, right? Uh, let, let's let's give him a benefit of the doubt that he has something planned that we have never seen before, because I have never seen this in a serious game. John, I don't know if you stepped away and you didn't see the early stages. The guys didn't take the boars because they didn't really have a real scout. So I think that was a big part of why we didn't see boars taken in this game. At that point, they had already farmed. But yeah, good play from Red. Red's not really being aggressive right now, and I think he could be. But he's probably just bracing himself because he knows the attack could come. Yet again, Blue says, screw the next age. I prefer to stay here in Feudal Age. Thank you very much. You know, some people just don't appreciate the age they're in, you know? And then when they're in Castle Age, they look back at Feudal Age and say, man, I wish I would have appreciated those years in Feudal Age instead of just trying to speed right through it. We're getting real deep with this. You can apply that to your life if you wish to, or you can just recognize that that was pretty stupid of me to say. Uh, good old university here for Red. Red's got knights, he's got crossbows, he's got gunpowder. All these things are fantastic. Against 53 men-at-arms. Soon going to be 58. When will he stop? He's done a great job economically. I mean, losing the 29 bills was bad. But, you know, TC idle time's great. Um, He's produced villagers more consistently. He's just... He just produced way too much army and didn't use it. That's the thing. <laughs> he doesn't even... He doesn't know anything. There's no red on the map. And yet he thinks I need more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is so funny. Red's played very well. Getting some different eco upgrades. Consistently making good types of army. Decent blacksmith upgrades as well. Hmm. I like how you call a 618 ELO game serious. Okay, mister, I'm 620 ELO. Yo, let's not diss 618 ELO, all right? This is super serious business. He's got 83 armor. You telling me? Have you done that? Bet you haven't in Feudal Age. He wants more. He's producing vills. He's producing scouts. He's producing spears. He's going to town. Meanwhile, Red's going to be imp soon. Maybe he has a rule where he can't go to Castle Age until his opponent's an imp. Kind of like he couldn't go to Feudal Age until his... Or, wait. Feudal Age until his opponent was in Castle? I forget how bad it was. Oh, God. He's making another barracks. Oh, God. He's never going Castle Age. Not another one. I want to know with how much consistency has this thing produced? All time, 50%. He built this at, like, the seven-minute mark. <laughs> that's, that's impressive. The stable's at 66%. Obviously, that's a bit newer. This is at 65%. I mean, Carlos is about to hit 100 army. All right. There he goes. He sees the castle, and he sees a bunch of gunpowder. What does he do? He hasn't queued up anything more ever since losing his friends to the guns. Does this tempt him to go to the next stage now? Does he think maybe it's time? Does he attack with everything? Nope, it looks like he's idling his production. And... Click Castle Age! Click Castle Age! Click Castle Age! Go Castle Age! Hey! Good time for Castle Age! Everybody wants to be in Castle Age. Okay. All right. Well, sucks to farm on the front lines. That's why I always farm in the back. All right, let's see. Town Bell has been rung. The people have been brought home. Scouts are in. Or there. And the scouts <laughs> is the last thing Red was expecting because he still hasn't seen the full group of men-at-arms that he saw earlier. So he's probably very confused by this. But the scouts die because Janissaries are very strong. Red's going to be Imperial Age in 15 seconds. Blue's going to be in Castle Age in 2 minutes. And I don't need to say this because I'm sure you all 
are very well aware, but this is really bad for blue. And it's not going to get much better now that the Janissaries are going to be elite. 54 man-at-arms remaining after losing so many. His most created unit might even be 100 man-at-arms. Uh, Capture Age will tell us at the end of the game. All right. Hussar getting some raids in. Also, blue doesn't have loom. This guy's really unique. Might need to dive into this guy's games. God, it would be so sick if he could somehow win this game. <laughs> Someone dared Carlos, said, Carlos, do you like man-at-arms? And he just said, yes. Or he, he went to go for the man-at-arms. She's like, I didn't know what build order it was, so I just figured I'd just uh, make a few more than extra. Okay, right away, with a purpose, clicks longsword, clicks pikemen, clicks squires. Um... I don't even know where his blacksmith is. Does he have one? He got upgrades before. Oh my god. Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. Guys, he's moving out. He's moving out. The great counterattack of Carlos. Carlos Cannon 98, which is kind of ironic because he's currently dying to cannons. But he, that means he understands them, which is the most important aspect of countering them. He might actually be able to take the treble with scouts. Okay, he doesn't know where his opponent is, which is not so good. He's lost 45 villagers in this game, and it's going to get worse. But we don't freaking care about that, do we? We just care about this. Is Carlos looking at home? Probably not. Nope, he is. Respect to him for paying attention to his people. But they're just going to farm until their death at this point. No retirement for them. Still at this point, the only buildings that Blue has seen are the buildings from Red in the middle. He's looking. <laughs> He's really looking. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Can you imagine if, if he went to the south first? Oh, God. Okay, Red left some holes in his walls. What a mistake that is. Okay, Blue has located the enemy. Target acquired. Okay, this is Red's point of view. <laughs> Red's like, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and Carlos is like, yeah, screw you, tower. Yeah. Charge. <laughs> he just resigns. <laughs> oh, God. Carlos, I don't know what was what got into you here, man. <laughs> I don't know if your shift key, like maybe you had some crumbs in the keyboard, so your shift key was stuck. So anytime you went to create a unit, it created five of them. <laughs> but while that was completely horrible for you, it was very good for us and I had a lot of fun. I'm a little disappointed he didn't fight more with them, but maybe he didn't want the KD to be any worse for himself. In the end, he produced 66 long swords and um well uh he created a total of 112 army it was just the type of army and the timing of the armies he created that was the problem again you go back we analyze this game um and you know it was already pretty weird in dark age too but okay like right here when he's got four militia obviously he kills this villager actually let's let's allow him to get to 10 because we know he likes militia Okay, right here. If he just stops producing militia and then goes, you know, delays production and goes up, Red doesn't even have scouts yet. So what? this is what, 17 minutes? Red doesn't attack till the 24th minute. If he would have just delayed production then instead of going to 30 freaking militia at that time, this guy's okay. Like, he'll have 30 men at arms, obviously knowing where the opponent is to be helpful to. I think he would do a pretty good job in this game. So it could have worked. Another main issue for him was he loved his walls, uh, but he loved to keep holes in the walls, which was horrible for him. And the opponent getting through and doing all that damage uh, so easily was a mistake. A couple houses here, gate, you know, all that good stuff could be helpful. But I, that game was just so extreme and so funny. 
And I almost want to see if Red said something after the game. Did he say anything? No. Carlos just left the game, and Red just left the game, and he probably texted his friends about his victory here today. But yeah, it was a good time. Um, very weird, very silly. We'll maybe look at more Carlos games, because I don't know. That was so extreme that I feel like he does that every single time. I'll take a quick look for sure. One final thing before I let you all go. I am headed to Australia. And according to my YouTube analytics, there are quite a few people watching from Australia. And I thought, if I'm headed over there, that we should do something cool. So if you happen to be anywhere near Sydney, Australia, I'm hosting an Age of Empires 2 meetup on August 12th at 7 p.m. local time. There will be drinks. There will be food. You'll get to hang out with other Age of Empires 2 fans and get a chance to meet me, take some photos and all that. I put all the information in the description if you're interested in this. Ultimately, the goal is just to have a good time. But if there's computers there, we might do some gaming too. So again, just check the link and buy a ticket if you're interested. Would love to meet you. And thanks for watching.